Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about advanced tape patterning. If you haven't already, make sure to check our previous video, which introduces basic concepts of tape patterning. I'm by no means an expert on tape patterning for foam fabrication, but this should at least put you in the right direction. Our project for today is going to be turning this small sculpt of a Wizard of Oz Oz head into this larger foam fabricated version. As inspiration for this sculpt, I look to W. W. Denslow's illustrations for The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Many productions of The Wizard of Oz use giant Oz heads, including the giant mechanized one in Wicked. I started by sculpting a head out of an oil-based plasticine clay, using the original illustrations for reference. Because I'll only be taking a pattern of half the head, the other half doesn't need as much detail, just enough form to give me an idea of the finished look. To prep the sculpt for patterning, I'm removing the eye and ear. I know that I'm going to install the eyes separately, and building and attaching an ear afterwards will be much easier. I'm covering the finished half of the sculpt with aluminum foil and smoothing it to get as much detail as possible. Then I cover everything with a layer of masking tape. I'm breaking up the pattern into several pieces to get them to lay as flat as possible once I remove them from the sculpt, adding registration marks to help assembly later. Because this is a more complex shape than the simple one in our previous videos, I'm also adding letters in red to remind me where pieces match up with each other. This shape is different from our simple one in another way. It has sharp ridges and valleys, like at the top of the brow and where the nose meets the face. These pieces will eventually need to be cut at a bevel to fit together correctly, so I'm adding little V marks in the direction that the blade will be angled. The way I remember which way to put the Vs is I imagine they're pointing in the direction water would flow if you poured some on the line. Another important step with patterning more complex shapes is taking pictures for reference. Once these pattern pieces get peeled off, they can be tricky figuring out which one relates to which part of the head. Now I can carefully cut on the lines and remove all the pattern pieces. I like to lay a sheet of plexiglass on top of the pieces before taking a picture of them to make them as flat as possible. Then you can bring them into your photo editing software of choice and enlarge them to whatever scale you want. If you don't have access to a photocopier or a computer, you can always use a red auto vectorizer pen. Make sure to use red, as the black version creates a rasterized image rather than vector pads. The original sculpt is three inches wide, and I want to scale it up to be seven inches wide. Seven divided by three is about 2.33, so I'll scale the original pattern up by 233%. For complex patterns like this, I usually like to cut the pieces out of EVA foam. It's far more dense, so it keeps the sharp angles sharp. But we're in a quarantine right now, and all I have on hand is half-inch upholstery foam. It will still work, but the final result's features will be a bit smoother. I'm making sure to transfer all the registration marks and other notations onto the foam too. Using a fresh, single-edged razor blade, I'm carefully cutting out all the pieces, paying close attention if I need to keep the blade straight up and down, or cut at a bevel. I'm applying a thin layer of contact cement to both sides of the foam. Contact cement can cause serious damage if you breathe in the vapors, so make sure you wear a respirator that's rated for vapors. If you're still in quarantine and can't get a respirator, at least work outside in the fresh air. Once the glue is no longer tacky to the touch, you can glue the pieces together. Some shapes are a little awkward to figure out, but just keep stretching and squishing your foam to make sure the registration marks align and it should turn out fine. Once you have one side of your pattern glued together, you'll probably think to yourself, this doesn't look very good. I think I messed something up and I just wasted three hours on a bad project. This art is bad, and I am bad for doing it. When that happens, just take a breath, through your respirator, and keep going. The more pieces you glue together, the more structure the whole piece has. Attaching the two halves together will force each piece into shape until your finished head 
appears like magic. See? It's fine. You're a good artist. And even if it turned out kind of lumpy and messed up, maybe you can make a really interesting character who's kind of lumpy and messed up. I'm cutting some foam out of the eye sockets to make room for a couple ping pong ball eyes, and then adding some thin foam on top to be the lower lid. Using scissors, you can trim the hard edges of foam to round them over into organic shapes. I realized at this point that I had forgotten to create a tape pattern for the ear that I removed earlier. So using a scrap piece of foam and my original illustration for reference, I made one freehand and used that ear as a pattern for the second. This pattern could easily be scaled up even further to create an Oz head of any size. You could print out your pattern on transparency film and use an overhead projector to lay out your pattern as large as you like. As your project gets bigger, you may find that you need more internal structure to keep it from collapsing on itself. But that's just life. 